next video. Today we're here with Willie Three Beers, and I imagine there's a story that goes with that name, uh, and his really nice uh, Ram Promaster van. Um, and he's got a very homey van, and he's a practical guy, lives a practical life, and so it's the van is just the way he likes it and wants it. So, uh, Willie, how long have you been in your van? Uh, about a year and a half. Um, I had it for probably six months before that, and uh, um, but it's been a year and a half solid. That it's been my only home. And why do you live in a van? Um, well, I had the choice of being house poor um, or going out and uh, living life. Um, you know, I, I retired uh, as soon as I could. Um, you know, get on Social Security and. Uh, I, you know, I've uh, actually I haven't worked a full time job since 1991, which is another story. But, uh, um, you know, uh, people in my family tend not to live to be old. And uh, I wanted to make the best of the time I have. Well, you know, it's it's good that you know that mm. and that you can plan around that. That way, hopefully you'll live forever. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, ho I'm, I'm hoping that it does work that way, you know. Yeah. Plan on dying and you keep on living. Right. Good, good. And that hopefully so. And so house poor, meaning you you were in a house, but boy, it just took all your money, I would assume. Yeah. Well, actually, I lived in a condo. Um, and uh, I would have, you know, if I'd have kept living there every month, I would have had less money and less money. You know, I would have had to live off my savings. I would have to live meagerly. Um, I wouldn't have been able to travel. And I've, I've always liked traveling. Um, and, uh, you know, in this regard, uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure how I stumbled on, you know, van dwelling. Um, but you know, your videos were definitely influential, um, Brian's videos. Um, and so I came out to the RTR in 2018, um, just for that and, uh, realized after that, that I could do that and, uh, you know, made some friends and stuff. And then, uh, last year. Um, I remember thinking when I was coming out, ah, well, what am I going to do? And then that was when the caravans were announced. And uh, uh, that really has uh, opened up uh, a complete new social life. Um, and uh, it's it's been very nice. So you uh, went out and joined a caravan uh, with about this time last year, I guess. Yeah, uh, well, October uh, 31st, mm -hmm. um, I was there at Arenberg. Um, and uh, um, I jumped back and forth a little bit, and uh, I have friends in San Diego and Vegas that I visit when I'm out here too, so I'm always going back and forth. Um, but, uh, you know, the caravan is sort of a home base for me, and, uh, you know, hanging out with right. uh, the friends I've made here has uh, really enriched, uh, you know, uh, this part of my life. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, I noticed also the uh, prayer flags. Are there Buddhist prayer flags? They are, yes. Um, they were a gift, actually, from uh, a student I had in the last class I taught. Um, I used to work for the state of Connecticut, um, teaching philosophy and English. And uh, um, it was a... You know, it was just a nice present that uh, one of my students gave me and uh, uh, reminds me of uh, uh, good days and, you know, the hope, you know, supposedly each one of these threads that leaves is uh, your dream being carried forward somewhere or good luck or something. I'm not entirely sure. So <laughs> I'm not a Buddhist. <laughs> yeah, a lot of Thai people like them. Uh, you see, I see them a lot. Mm. And the philosophy behind them is uh, really good. Really close. Yeah. Were you concerned for your safety when you first thought about moving in a van? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I thought about it, but I, you know, I tend to uh, be fairly aware of my surroundings. And, uh, um, you know, most people are pretty decent people. Yes. And uh, um, that has been my experience. And, uh, um, you know, I uh, it helps to be a good-sized man. It does. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, I, you know, I... I usually don't find myself in places where, uh, you know, things are going to be uh, wacky. And if I do, you know, 
get in their van and drive right. somewhere else. In the last a little over a year, uh, have you run into an encounter where you were concerned for your safety? Um, not where I was concerned for my safety, but I do remember, because um, when I travel, uh, I do go back east, uh, well, so far every year. Um, and when I'm traveling, I used to tend to stay at a lot of Walmarts. And uh, I do recall going to Walmart and seeing six police cars there one day and deciding very rapidly that, uh, okay, I'm not staying here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's it's that type of situation. Right. Um, I've, you know... Um, I mean, there are definitely some, you know, unusual people out there, um, but uh, they're usually easily easy to spot. Right. Yeah. And turn the key and drive away. Exactly. Yeah. I, uh, um, I'm uh, not a crusader in any way. <laughs> right. Right. And why did you choose the ProMaster? Well, um, the first time I stepped inside, I realized that uh, this has probably about six to eight inches more headroom because it's front wheel drive, so there's no drive shaft, um, and it's just roomier. I mean, I can't stand up st entirely straight, but uh, um, I can stand up enough that I'm relatively comfortable. Well, you are tall, but when it was from the factory, could you stand up? No, no. I mean, I mean it's and it's oh. only uh, there's only three quarters of an inch on the floor and. Uh, uh, probably less than an inch if you count the struts and the ceiling. I mean, um, it, it's insulated, but it's uh, it's not really built out a whole lot, uh, you know, um, from the floor or from the ceiling. Right. They're, but they are, I think inside, they are the biggest I, I think inside. so too, yeah. Oh, they're the squarest, and they just end up being a lot of space in there. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm, I mean, I have a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> So you don't think of yourself as a minimalist? Uh, no, no. I have, uh, uh, like I say, I have probably have enough clothes to last a year. Um, people rib me because I can go two months without doing laundry, um, you know, without a problem. <laughs> you know, just, I have a lot of stuff in there. Um, probably have a month's worth of food. That's um, nothing wrong with that, I think. Yeah. Um, I have three stoves. <laughs> three stoves is a lot. <laughs> just in case. Uh, um, yeah, but... Uh, I figure in a few more years I'll have whittled it down. Right. You know, uh, when I wear out the clothes, I can just throw them away. <laughs> yeah, uh, you learn things over time. True. And uh, well, I'm, I'm trying to read the books that I have been carrying around so I can get rid of those and not replace as, as many of them. Well, that's good motivation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to get some more room in here. That's true. Uh, and so, uh, do you have solar? Uh, I do not have solar. Um, not as of yet. I do. I do have batteries um, that uh, I've picked up along the way, um, and hopefully at some point this year uh, I will get panels and do all the wiring and the like. Um, I do tend to have a little block when it comes to electricity, but I'm also not the type of guy who uh, um, gets things done in a hurry. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm that kind of guy too. <laughs> Something I've had to overcome yeah. a lot in, in my line of work now. Well, fortunately, I don't. There's, I have no deadlines, so right. Although that's that is sort of a curse for me too, because I always used to need deadlines. Right. But, uh, so, are you charging off your engine when you run? Um, I I do charge some stuff uh, off the engine. I have a couple of those little portable battery uh, power packs mm -hmm. to keep the phone charged. Um, and I don't use a whole lot of uh, you know, electricity. I have a, a cooler. Um, I use, on average, two 10-pound blocks of ice a week. Um, and uh, that seems to suffice. Mm -hmm. Well, cool. As long as it works. Yeah. No, I can have, uh, I can have my eggs and bacon and, uh, and enjoy it. Right. Keep my beer cold. Right. That's the key thing. <laughs> have those be cold beverages. Yeah. Well, why don't we take a look around inside? This is home. So you home built is... it out. I did build it out. Um, uh, basically, just a frame bed. Uh, it's a little on the high side, but it has plenty of storage underneath. Right. And then uh, this is a shelf that was once a bookcase. Um, and then uh, I just store all the stuff in peach crates. Um, Laundry and more clothes. I got, like I said, I have enough clothes to last me for probably a year. Yeah, yeah. 
and they're not uh, they don't weigh much they don't take up that much no, space no, and uh, you don't have to buy more they say pretty uh spartan i guess right but everything you need yeah well it's i i do have that problem of okay i know i have this where is it right um, and right. sometimes it may take a little while but usually uh i find the stuff that i've lost in the van right and and uh we haven't discussed the name how <clears throat> willie three beers well um uh, my retirement uh project is to uh try to go to a few thousand craft breweries mm -hmm. um and i actually i just recently uh passed 700. oh wow um but uh i'm what's called a beer ticker and uh I go to different craft breweries, try different beers, um, and, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, an, another uh, sort of very social um, hobby. Um, I've met a lot of people in that community also, and uh, very similar type of laid back, um, you know, uh, let's have a good time together type environment. and. Uh, you know, that's probably the short version of that story, but uh, I do enjoy beer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, it's it's become a thing. There are a lot of people, you're not alone in that hobby. No. Uh, a lot I, of people yeah. doing that. My my son, uh, he uh, he loves craft beer. Mm -hmm. And wherever he goes, that's one of the things he looks for. I mean, he go, might go to a foreign country and look for craft beer. Oh, yeah. Everywhere yeah. he goes. Okay, and so one thing I have to ask everyone, uh, how do you go to the bathroom? Uh, in a bucket. In a bucket, <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah. I'm all together very, very yeah. familiar with the uh, bucket idea. Yeah, um, I, uh, I did watch your video on it. I do the double bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, it's just, it's, it's so much convenienter. Uh, you don't have to deal with dumping uh, right. and that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it works. Uh, like I say, I'm pretty comfortable with this space. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, your, uh, your house is tiny, but your backyard is enormous. That is true, yes. <laughs> so I like that. That's a good combination for me. And so showering, you don't have a shower. Uh, Planet Fitness primarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and... Uh, at some point, I probably will rig up something off the back, um, but I have uh, that's another project I haven't done yet. <laughs> right, one more, one more on the list. But I'm sure you do uh, sponge baths and and oh yeah, yeah, just uh, things in between the showers. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, this is an, an odd area in that there aren't that many Planet Fitnesses around. Right. But in a lot of places I camp, uh, I'm less than uh, five miles from a Planet Fitness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, I'm going to Havasu in the next couple of days. And uh, I'll be at the Planet Fitness probably every other day. Right. Um, you know, so uh, it's it's worked out pretty well. Um, and they're clean facilities, uh, usually located within five miles of most uh, Walmarts, too. Mm -hmm. it's when I travel, I usually do the Walmart thing. Mm hmm Good. And do you boondock most of the year when you're not traveling? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, when I'm, I, you know, I'm originally from New York, Connecticut, and uh, when I'm back in that area, um, I have sort of a rotation that is um, part, uh, you know, Walmarts, Planet Fitness parking lots and stuff like that, and part friends' driveways. Right, uh, right. I try to move around because don't want to wear out my welcome anywhere. Yep, very important. Um, it's, like I say, very Spartan. At some point, I might do nicer woodworking. <laughs> right. Can always upgrade. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, and I I, I do plan on uh, shortening this, um, turning the crate sideways, and building out a little bit here so I have a shelf. So I'm cooking on the shelf instead of on top of the cooler. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but uh, that will be in the spring. I'll be... Uh, going back east and I'll be able to take everything out mm -hmm. do a little construction and uh, be like phase phase two well Willie thank you so much for uh, sharing your home and your story with us um, you know very simple very practical but anyone can do it oh yeah I mean uh, it's it's not difficult and 
uh, the rewards, I think, uh, really outweigh the hardships. Yes, very, very much. Okay, thanks so much, Willie. Folks, I hope you've got some inspiration from this, some great ideas that you can go and live now. You don't have to wait. Things don't have to all fall in place. You can just go. And if you did, then like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.